And that's the business. I'll see you soon. Live from London, this is BBC News. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continues to say Israel is preparing for a ground invasion of Gaza, but the Israelis won't say when it will happen. We did a uh, tactical raid, which means that the forces went in and then went out uh, during the night in order to prepare the battlefield and to uh, prepare ourselves for coming operations. UN aid workers in Gaza say a decision will be taken shortly over whether a lack of fuel will stop them supporting hundreds of thousands of civilians. At least 22 people have been killed in mass shootings in the US state of Maine. Police name Robert Card as a person of interest as they launch a huge manhunt for the suspect. We have uh, literally hundreds of police officers working around the state of Maine. Uh, to investigate this case, to locate Mr. Card, who again is a person of interest and a person of interest only. And we'll continue to gather information so that we can bring uh, the suspect to justice. Hello, I'm Celia Hatton. The Israeli army says it launched a tactical raid into the Gaza Strip overnight. An IDF spokesman told the BBC that troops had carried out the raid towards central Gaza in order to prepare the battlefield for future operations. Earlier, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu insisted that a ground invasion of the Ga Gaza Strip is coming, but he won't say when it will happen. Inside Gaza, aid agencies say more supplies are desperately needed. Our Middle East correspondent Tom Bateman reports. Well, around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. At least 22 people have been killed and up to 60 injured in a mass shooting in the state of Maine, according to US media. Police say the gunman targeted multiple locations in the city of Lewiston and is still at large. Residents have been warned to stay at home. Our reporter, Vin Vinnie McCavney, has the latest. And we're just going to bring you some information that's come into us here at BBC News. It, it's an announcement from the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Oliver Dowd, and the UK's Deputy Prime Minister. He says that Britain will convene a meeting of the government's emergency response committee today to consider its strategy and approach towards Gaza and the Israeli Hamas conflict. Let's just take a look at what's going on in Gaza this hour. This is our uh, live shot from Gaza. Now, the Israeli military says it carried out a significant incursion into the Gaza Strip overnight. And of course, you, for more information, you can look onto our BBC News website. Here's the website as it stands now, answering your questions. Stay with us here on BBC News. On BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. You're live with BBC News. 
Ford and the United Auto Workers Union have reached a tentative deal to end a six-week strike, but still no agreements at GM or Stellantis. Social media giant Meta reports stellar quarterly results even as it faces a lawsuit from dozens of US states accusing it of harming young users. And India wants to bring millets back to the world stage. It's an ancient gluten-free grain, but can it whet the global appetite? Hello, my name is Sally Bundock, which means right now it's time for the top business stories. And we're starting in the US, where nearly six weeks of costly strike action at the American car giant uh, Ford has reached a tentative deal with the United Auto Workers Union. So that strike action is coming to an end. This agreement needs approval from union leaders and is expected to provide a 25% wage hike over a four year period. UAW has asked striking Ford workers to go back to work while the deal undergoes a vote. General Motors and Chrysler's parents, Stellantis, are both still negotiating with the unions with workers on strike. I talked to Janet Moyi about this. She's with RBC Bruin Dolphin. She said the car companies are keen to reach agreement. Now let's squeeze in some other business stories and staying with interest rates, the European Central Bank will be making its decision on the cost of borrowing today. In September, Eurozone interest rates were raised to 4%, a record high, and that was the 10th time in a row the ECB increased the cost of borrowing. Inflation in the euro area is currently hovering around 4.3%. The head of toy maker Mattel has been saying for years that movies would help the company revive sluggish sales. Well, the company's latest results show he was right. Barbie Billings jumped 16% in the July to September period compared to the year before, driven by a success of the first ever film starring the doll. The gains marked a big turnaround, helping the company to its first quarter of sales growth in a year. Still to come, growing the global appetite for ancient grains that are gluten-free and good for the environment. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Hello again, you're live with BBC News. Let's continue with our business coverage. And here's a question for you. Have you heard of millets? They are gluten-free, ancient grains, and India has been hard at work to put them on the global Mac. They actually had the great idea of putting them on the menu for the global leaders who were recently gathered in Delhi for the G20 summit. And according to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, millets have greater health benefits than, say, rice or wheat. But for India, bringing about a millet revolution is proving to be fairly challenging, as Nikhil Inamdar has been finding out. And you can imagine there'll be a lot of attention in that New York courtroom later today as uh, SBF takes to the stand. Erin Delmore's covering that story for us in New York. That's the latest business from me. I'll be back here Monday morning. I'll see you then. Live from London, this is BBC News. The Israel Defence Forces say they've carried out a targeted raid overnight 
using tanks in northern Gaza. As Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel is preparing for a ground invasion. We did a uh, tactical raid, which means that the forces went in and then went out uh, during the night in order to prepare the battlefield and to uh, prepare ourselves for coming operations. UN aid workers in Gaza say a decision will be taken shortly over whether a lack of fuel will stop them supporting hundreds of thousands of civilians. Law enforcement says at least 16 people have been killed in mass shootings in the U.S. state of Maine. But reports say the death toll could be more than 20. A huge manhunt has been launched to find the suspect. Hello, I'm Celia Hatton. The Israeli army says it launched a tactical raid into the Gaza Strip overnight. An IDF spokesperson told the BBC troops had carried out the raid towards central Gaza in order to prepare the battlefield for future operations, they said. Earlier, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, insisted that a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip is coming, but he won't say when it will happen. Inside Gaza, aid agencies say more supplies are desperately needed. Our Middle East correspondent, Tom Bateman, has more. Okay, Anna, thanks for keeping tabs on that for us. Anna Foster speaking to us from northern Israel. Thank you. Well, around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. And you're live with BBC News. European Union leaders will meet today to discuss the ongoing Israel-Hamas war while also aiming to show continued support for Ukraine in its war against Russia's invasion. The summit in Brussels will be the first in-person meeting of the EU's 27 national leaders since the deadly October 7th assault on Israel. You see news, lots more to come. Stay with us. This is BBC News, the headlines. The Israel Defense Forces say they've carried out a targeted raid overnight using tanks in central Gaza, as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel is preparing for a ground invasion. UN aid workers in Gaza say a decision will be taken shortly over whether a lack of fuel will stop them supporting hundreds of thousands of civilians. Police in the U.S. state of Maine launch a manhunt for a gunman who's killed at least 16 people. Reports say the number of deaths could be more than 20. Well, let's return to our top story this hour. The Israeli military says it's carried out a significant incursion into Gaza overnight to attack Hamas positions. An Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson says troops carried out a tactical raid towards central Gaza in order, he says, to prepare the battlefield for future operations. Well, it's now been nearly three weeks since Hamas gunmen broke through the border from Gaza, killing more than 1,400 Israelis. More than 200 people, including several children, are, are still being held hostage by Hamas. Israel's retaliatory bombing campaign in Gaza has killed more than 5,000 Palestinians. For the latest from the region, I spoke earlier to our correspondent, Weir Davies, who's in southern Israel. That was Ron Hasner speaking to us from UC Berkeley in California. Now around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. And you're live with BBC News. Like you're on from the deadly crowd crush in South Korea. Its survivors have told the BBC they're still traumatized, and a lack of answers is making it difficult for them to heal. Nearly 160 young people were killed when they got trapped in an overcrowded alleyway in Seoul as they celebrated Halloween. Despite well-documented failings by the authorities, so far no one has been held responsible. Our correspondent Jean McKenzie reports from Seoul. Well, stay with us here on BBC News. Our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, will be presenting for us live from Jerusalem. That's coming up next. Bye-bye.